Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord's Feedback Guide Live. Guys, guys, we get to talk about baptism now. We are done with the Ten Commandments. We are done with the Apostles' Creed. We are done with the Lord's Prayer. And so we have come in the large catechism to the topic on baptism. And it is about to get all Lutheran up in here. And by that I mean really, really offensive to everyone who doesn't read the Word of God assuming that it is true. See, Luther in the large catechism just gets right off to it, ripping the band-aid off. He opens the section in the large catechism on baptism by writing, We have now finished the three chief parts of common Christian doctrine. Besides these, we have yet to speak of our two sacraments instituted by Christ, of which also every Christian ought to have at least an ordinary brief instruction, because without them, there can be no Christian. Without the sacraments, there can be no Christian. Yikes. So let's just go ahead and pre-screen our comment section. First, there is the personal anecdote. My so-and-so friend, neighbor, relative, aunt, um, they are way more Christian than any of you judgy Lutherans, and they were never baptized. Do you really think that you are better than they are? Well, no. Um, first, I, I mean, yeah, your friend, relative, neighbor, aunt, whatever, probably is less sinful than... I am, but I mean, that's a pretty low bar um, because baptism is for sinners. And so, you know, weird flex, but okay. The thing is, being better than me doesn't mean being perfect in God's eyes, which is actually the thing that the law demands. See, the reason that you prefer your friend, relative, cousin, aunt, whatever, over me is love, which is what this whole thing is all about. See, baptism is a gift of love from God. It's for you. The real question is whether or not you really think you're too good for it. Next, we can do the, um, the exception to the rule comment. Yeah. So you're saying, Pastor, that God just really wants to damn everyone in a third world country that hasn't been baptized. Every baby whose parents never took them to church before they were lost. I mean, you say that you care about the unborn, but you can't baptize them. And so every aborted child is in hell and you like it. No. You're saying, Pastor, that... You could have gone through adult instruction and on the morning that you were going to church to be baptized, been hit by a bus and gone to hell. What? Hang on, why do you want there to be an exception to this rule so bad? I mean, other than the fact that we always tend to assume that we are the exception to the rule. I mean, like, I, I'll, I won't be the one who gets cancer from smoking. I, I won't be the one who gets in a car accident when I text and drive. I won't be the one caught in this sin. We really want to assume that somehow the exception undoes the rule. I mean, at least for us. Either it gets rid of the consequence or it just proves the whole thing isn't true so we don't have to worry about it when just the truth of it is. Um, there's stuff in this world that we're uncomfortable with. And it's okay to say that. The real question is, is it a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, is it a healthy thing or an unhealthy thing to smoke? Is texting and driving a good thing or a bad thing? Is that sin that you're afraid to be caught in a good thing or a bad thing? So, I mean, yes, there are unbaptized people out there. Um, but is that a good thing or a bad thing? Because, I mean, if I had gotten hit by a bus on my way to church in order to be baptized that morning when I was 19, I would have died saying that baptism is a good thing that I wish I had, which is sort of the point. See, faith in Jesus goes to Jesus. The real question is whether or not Jesus is in baptism. Because if he is... It's something that we'll desire. Because this is kind of the real objection that most of us have to such a statement like, baptism now saves you. The real one is, are you really saying, Pastor, that you can't love God without being a part of a church full of sinners? What I'm saying is, God loves that church full of sinners and really wants to be a part of it himself, even if you don't. See, the whole thing about baptism, of all the stuff that we're doing here, it is not to try and rule people out. It is trying to assure them that they are in. God gives us baptism not to try and carve off more people into hell, but to actually grant comfort to those Christians out there that they might be sure that they will be saved. Because, I mean, you can put this whole thing on your works, but the law is not summed up in be a nicer person than Pastor Goodman. 
You can even try and put it on Christ, but here's the thing. I mean, if you can't find him, there's not a lot of comfort in that because Jesus died on the cross for me and for you, but I was not there. And, I mean, were you there when they crucified your Lord? Trembling or not, if you're watching this, you're about 2,000 years too late. You can ask me how I know he lives, but um, it's not actually in my heart. My heart thinks a lot of things are fun that God calls evil, even as it wars against that which the Holy Spirit has created in faith which I pray would triumph in the waters of baptism. You can put this thing on your heart, but that means, though, when you need God the most, he will feel the farthest away. You can put it on your commitment to him, but, I mean, if we really were so good at our commitments, nobody would be making New Year's resolution jokes right about now. But if God really is in the sacraments, like he promises to be, this is not about ruling people out, but assuring them that they are in. This is something that actually should grant comfort, certainty, and we need that. We need our salvation to be certain because if it is up to me, I will ruin it. I am that kind of sinner. There's a reason that you like your aunt, friend, relative, whatever more than me. I am a sinner, and so help has to come from outside of me, outside of uncertainty, and so God gives us this gift in something firm that we can hold on to. He gives us the waters of baptism, and, and he actually promises to be inside of it, to work through it, and that is what this whole thing is all about. It is not about your personal anecdote. It is not about the exception to the rule. It's not even about our wishes about what was. It's about his promises, and God promises to save you through baptism. Bear with us. We're going to talk about this thing.